So we are all in this room insiders. We are the, the, the most elite news, us, us Chardonnay swilling news junkies. Elites are perfectly comfortable with there being information about how they make their decisions and what their biases are as long as that only circulates among other elites. 95 percent. On October 17th, two professors of journalism at NYU, Jay Rosen, an associate professor, and Clay Shirky, who's done consulting work for the New York Times, were both caught on tape talking about the New York Times' strategy to legitimize President Obama in the 2008 election. They got around it in a really interesting way with Obama. The New York Times' strategy to help Occupy Wall Street. But so the problem is, if you want Occupy Wall Street to succeed, you want them not to get press coverage in the beginning. Tax loopholes for NPR. But they don't pay taxes, they're snapped. Were that loophole to be closed, NPR would, would be in some trouble. The New York Times' unwillingness to cover a certain political candidate. Michelle Bachman, un, un, unelectable. Crazy stuff comes out of her mouth. It's just insane. Right, go, go ahead and imagine two things. President Rick Perry and no New York Times. <laughs> Here's part two of our series to catch a journalist. Hello. Hello, is this Professor Rosen? Yes, thank you. Hey, this is James O'Keefe from the Project Veritas. Uh, do be calling me. Well, I have to get your comment on a story I'm doing. Even if the Times says, okay, yeah, secretly we're liberals, and now publicly we're liberals, and there it is, um, they still have the dilemma of not wanting to create the news they cover. And it's, right. it's a difficult problem. That's a tough one. Um, they got around it in a really interesting way with Obama. Their obvious, uh, you know, their obvious second favorite candidate after Clinton. Clinton, the, the liberal consensus candidate, would, would have been there. And I think probably was their candidate inside for a while. Um, but the Obama story was the huge dilemma for horse race, horse race political coverage because no one would have given you even 100 to 1 odds. In 2006, no one would have given you 100 to 1 odds on an African-American president. But they ended up covering Obama because of the newsworthy things that were happening around the Obama campaign. So you could not say, oh my goodness, for the first time there's a viable African-American candidate, because by the act of saying that, you would be creating the story you were nominally covering. And so they, they felt hung up on this. But they could say, oh my goodness, Obama girl, isn't this funny, this funny video that this young woman did about, uh, about now our future president, or about our, now our current president. Or Will I Am did, did a video that was a you know, huge breakout, breakout on, uh, on YouTube. And so they covered it, they covered Obama from the internet culture angle. Uh, and a bit at a time, it became acceptable to consider that he might be president. But they needed someone else to make the first move. Because I was thinking of something Brian Self Doctor, Doctor. Mm -hmm. said to us when he was here about how one of the reasons he thought that they were not covering up by Wall Street and that was because it was a liberal protest and because if the New York Times ran out there to cover it, it would show a liberal bias despite the fact that they would easily run out there to cover a Tea Party protest. But so the problem is, if you want Occupy Wall Street to succeed, you want them not to get press coverage in the beginning. So in a way, although Occupy Wall Street loves to talk about the lack of press attention, the period between when they started going and when the press caught on, less than 10 days. And that that was actually probably good for them. It mattered so much to Occupy Wall Street that no newspaper sent them any traffic in the beginning. So that by the time the media stuff appeared, they had a cultural core that was solid enough to, solid enough to absorb that traffic. And if the Times if the Times had thought they were doing them a favor by saying, oh, you know, 20 kids slept overnight in the park and this is going to shake the world, it would have shaken the world less than it has now. 
So even if the Times were being completely tactically liberal, they still wouldn't want to rush in and front run that story. The other thing the NPR's got is that, is that the whole idea of sponsorship has been made ridiculous. NPR runs advertising. But because of the way the tax code is written, they don't have to call it advertising. But a, but a radio ad plus a URL is direct marketing. So the invention of the web has created an enormous wind in NPR sales for raising money through a, an advertising model, but they don't pay taxes through an advertising model. Mm -hmm. Were that loophole to be closed, NPR would, would be in some trouble. And I think, in fact, if the Times found a way to start using behavioral economics better, to get those people to kick in a buck or five bucks a month out of some sense of, right, go, go ahead and imagine two things. President Rick Perry and no New York Times. And now, and now think about whether you want to kick us five bucks from time to time. Right, right. Where if there's a scheduled election, Covering candidates who you think have a serious chance of governing well as people they should pay attention to um, would get you out of a lot of the, you know, I mean, the I, Michelle Bachman, un, un, unelectable, unelectable, um, because the whatever the Tea Party says and whatever happens at the at the at the you know, kind of narrowest band of Republican decision making in, in, in the primaries, mainstream Midwesterners are simply not going to vote for her because she just crazy stuff comes out of her mouth all the time. Have you ever seen her on this on the you know just videos of her in the in the Congress? It's just insane. And yet because she was first place in a non-binding straw poll in I Iowa Iowa, right. She was covered as if she was a serious candidate. So I think, I think not only would it be a step in the direction of saying these people could govern, but you could also say basically, we're not paying any attention to her because she's unelectable, <laughs> right? And then, right. And then you, could, you, could, you could make that decision as well. And the Times kind of had to cover her right. because everybody basically had to agree that the Iowa straw poll was meaningful, even though it visibly was. So, so we are all in this room insiders. We are the, the, the most elite news. I mean, just the, th the thing you said about uh, isn't it easy to tell by taking these newspapers would require you to look at two different newspapers, which already locks out 95% 95% of the country. How is a person who only reads one newspaper ever to know where that newspaper stands? So one of the things that often happens is elites are perfectly comfortable with there being information about how they make their decisions and what their biases are as long as that only circulates among other elites. But the minute it goes out into the wider world. So the difference between you could find out and the newspaper tells you is in many ways the difference between we know, us, us Chardonnay swilling news junkies, and <laughs> every, everybody knows. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows isn't about the information, it's about the social environment in which the Times has to do its business. We reached out to Professor Rosen for comment and read him most of the transcript that you've seen here focusing on the elitist comments. This is what he had to say. So you're quoted as saying, quote, we are the one percent in the context of a dialogue regarding elites in the news media. Do you, do you have a comment on the quotes that I'm giving you right now? <laughs> You know what, James? Just do whatever you want to, okay? Okay, do you have a comment regarding the information that I've given you today, sir? Do whatever you want to do. That is my comment. Write it down. Do whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm going to quote you on that. Do whatever you want to do. That's your comment. That is my comment. Anything else? Do whatever you want to do. Okay. Well, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Full uncut tapes can be viewed at projectveritas.com. Stay tuned to our website for the next episode of To Catch a Journalist.